Yeah, so at the meeting this year, um, I uh, gave an update on uh, advances in the treatment of uh, metastatic gastric cancer, uh, and I reviewed recent studies uh, indicating what's the optimal chemotherapy regimen, what uh, is the role of genomic profiling, what are uh, emerging new targets, and what's the role of immunotherapy drugs. So in metastatic gastric cancer, a fluorinated pyrimidine and a platinum drug is really considered the standard of care. And whether or not adding a third drug, a taxane, uh, enhances benefit, uh, significantly increases toxicity, um, and earlier studies did suggest potential modest benefits for uh, upfront taxane combination therapy versus just uh, five a few platinum. So uh, I reviewed the uh, older trial from Germany. Uh, Germany is the uh, country that developed the FLOT regimen, which is now 5 few oxaliplatin uh, docetaxel as preoperative treatment in gastric cancer. But it's not clear whether that regimen should be routinely applied in metastatic disease. And they conducted a randomized trial in patients 65 or over comparing 5 few oxaliplatin uh, with or without the addition of uh, taxotere, docetaxel, and they showed no progression for your overall survival uh, benefits for three drugs over two drugs and nearly a doubling of the rate of uh, grade three and four adverse events. So uh, additional data come from a recent randomized trial from Japan that was presented at the ASCO meeting last year in 2018 by Yamada and colleagues from Tokyo, which compared standard uh, S1 cisplatinum with or without the addition of docetaxel. And this was a trial in over 700 patients with metastatic gastric cancer and pretty convincingly showed no survival benefit for uh, adding a taxane to two drug S1 cisplatinum. And they also looked at intestinal versus diffuse histologies and saw no difference. So very compelling data that for the vast majority of patients, two drug chemotherapy should be the standard in metastatic gastric cancer. And in the US, we typically use either infusional 5-FU oxaliplatin or capecitabine oxaliplatin. So in terms of targeted agents, um, we uh, do have emerging data from genomic profiling that there are uh, about 50% 50, 50 of gastric cancers are associated with uh, overexpression of receptor-associated tyrosine ki kinase pathways like HER2 and EGFR and MET, FGF. And uh, we now have an approved drug, uh, trastuzumab, which improves outcome in first-line chemotherapy in HER2-positive gastric cancer patients. So giving patients trastuzumab with first-line chemotherapy is now standard. Uh, however, uh, other HER2-targeted agents have virtually all failed in gastric cancer. Uh, combining lapatinib with chemotherapy first line did not improve outcome. Uh, dual targeted therapy, pertuzumab and tristuzumab combined with chemotherapy was no better than chemotherapy plus uh, tristuzumab alone. And in the second line setting, uh, uh, TDM1, uh, which is tristuzumab emtansine, the conjugate of trastuzumab, trastuzumab and an antimicrotubule agent, was no better than chemotherapy alone. Uh, so really, trastuzumab is the only approved uh, agent uh, that improves outcome only in first-line treatment. And also an interesting, uh, another issue is whether or not, uh, you know, like in breast cancer, we always continue trastuzumab into second and third-line treatment. Uh, randomized trial data from Japan in a phase two trial showed no benefit uh, in patients progressing on first-line trastuzumab-based treatment. When patients got second-line paclitaxel, there was no benefit for continuing the uh, trastuzumab. So, so that's obviously an area of active research, and there are a number of drugs in development, uh, including um, uh, there's a Daiichi drug, uh, which is a conjugate of a topoisomerase 1 inhibitor in tristizumab, which looks very promising in second line in uh, tristizumab-resistant uh, patients. Uh, and also what we've learned uh, from uh, the genomic profiling is there is a subset of patients with gastric cancer that are MSI high. We know across the board in solid tumors that MSI high cancers respond quite vigorously to immune checkpoint inhibitors. So uh, a good 5 to 7 percent of gastric cancers are MSI high. And in the metastatic disease setting, at least in the United States, um, uh, the drug pembrolizumab, which is a PD-1 inhibitor, is now approved uh, to treat patients in the second line that are resistant to upfront chemotherapy if they're MSI high. In terms of the emerging role of immunotherapy drugs, um, uh, there does to be, appear to be a clear signal of activity for checkpoint inhibitors, uh, clearly in MSI high uh, gastric cancers where response rates can exceed 50, 60 percent, even in chemotherapy refractory disease. Uh, for pembrolizumab, the data support use of uh, pembrolizumab in chemotherapy refractory patients that are PDL1 positive, 1 percent or higher PDL1 positive patients. Uh, 
our candidates for pembrolizumab uh, salvage therapy with responses in about 10 or 15 percent of patients. Uh, data from Japan uh, show that nivolumab in chemotherapy, refractory disease, another uh, checkpoint inhibitor that targets PD-1, uh, was better than best supportive care in chemotherapy, refractory gastric cancer. Uh, the pembrolizumab data support the use of pembrolizumab in pdl one positive patients. Nivolumab, uh, the trial was done agnostic of PDL1 and showed benefit in both PDL1 positive and negative patients. So actually, nivolumab is approved in Japan uh, for chemotherapy refractory gastric cancer as a late line treatment with uh, modest responses, about 10% of patients, but an improvement in uh, one year survival over best supportive care from about 11% to 27%. Uh, the data look very similar to the uh, pembrolizumab data. Uh, in the uh, PDL1 positive uh, patients. So uh, we hope to be able to refine the use of these drugs. Uh, there's now, we're awaiting studies looking at earlier line use of uh, checkpoint inhibitors. There are two ongoing trials of uh, chemotherapy with nivolumab or chemotherapy plus pembrolizumab versus chemotherapy alone uh, to see whether or not there's any kind of additive uh, benefit in patients. And uh, those trials are also looking at uh, PDL1 as a biomarker for identifying patients that might have a greater benefit. Uh, and uh, I think it's a very exciting time. Uh, uh, we've got uh, uh, pathways that are, we're studying actively. How can we optimally use checkpoint inhibitors? Should they be used only in PDL1 positive MSI high patients? Will they benefit an earlier line use of treatment? Um, but I think the take-home message is two-drug chemotherapy for most patients, uh, trastuzumab and HER2-positive patients. We now should routinely test all patients for, uh, with metastatic disease for HER2, PDL1, and MSI high status because it's going to have impact on uh, treatment selection.